Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Lutra campaign. We picked things up for episode 11 from turn 61 in the winter season of 194. So, uh, we saved the Emperor. He's safely in Hene. We'll try to get him back into Luoyang or Chang'an. Uh, both are okay. I think historically at this point, since Luoyang's not burned down, we'll just return him to the you know original capital for the Eastern Han Dynasty. Um, and we'll just build up Chang'an as a second capital option. Uh, but first we have some looter armies, very weak looter armies that we're just going to run over. Not really worth our time, we'll just delegate this fight. Lubuls haven't earned our trust yet, just because I don't know how the event triggers, so I'm worried he'll leave with most of our items, so he's just going to go bare naked for a little bit. I don't think we're going to be picking him up. No. So we'll just release him for some cash. For some more cash. And we will chase him down, actually. I don't want him on the field. It's, it's a lot of land. We don't have a lot of armies, so we're just going to go straight. Without having armies behind us. Yes, two stacks of resiliency. Pretty nice. Anyways. Luo Jun leveled up again. Mobility into reach, I think, is our option here. And we'll just park ourselves here, get a one turn healing, pick up the salt mine, and then work our way back to the horse pasture. And then a long journey down to attack uh, Yuan Yi at that point. We'll leave this open. Uh, if Dong Zhuo summons an army and, um, you know, goes back north, we might have to loop back, but hopefully that's not gonna happen. Or actually, hmm, we can handle this, and they can just keep going south. Yeah, let's do that. We get one more term healing, which, you know, it's not enough to heal him to full, but pretty close to full. And then we just cross over, attack this next turn. That feels pretty good. Alright, our main army, the one that's going to try to reclaim the capital for us, has a level 8 Huangfu Song. Let's see what we want. So he is a administrator, but we don't really have to build him like one. Um, he doesn't have a good skill here. This is not really useful for us. So technically, with him being level 8, we can get three more skills. I don't think we need this either. He's the frontline army. I don't need this because he does not recruiting melee infantry. And technically I could grab both of these and then this. Oh, we have four more, right? Eight, nine, ten has two slots. He's not leading right now. And there's not enough ranged unit. There's a lot of siege weapons. Okay, we can actually get both of these. It's fine. He'll stay administrator. Taiyun's a pretty important place. Taiyun's a little bit sad. We removed him from office, so it's understandable, but he should be okay. Zhang He ranked up. He needs to rank up one more time before we summon him onto the field, because I'm hoping to get him to three at least. I think he'll be he'll be more combat driven, so I I guess we could just take this top route. Yeah, let's do it. We're trying to avoid this yellow turban group. Yeah, we'll just take the crossing. We'll land on the other side. We don't need healing this turn. And we'll be able to attack that next turn. In Chuan, um, we could take this and then maybe use it as a trade piece. I really have no interest in holding it. I actually don't mind Dong Zhuo taking this, actually. If he, or he keeping it. Like, he can summon armies here. I can fight him here at uh, Hula Pass. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, so I think we'll keep that situation going where it is. I don't think we're getting an attack from anywhere else, at least not right now. I guess it's time to take a look at our spying, oh not spying, our uh, building situation. We don't actually have spies yet. Maybe we'll get one from reforms, 
uh, next turn, but not convinced that that's like what we should do right now. Corruption reduction. We need we need the corruption reduction building to be honest, the one that has adjacency, because we're getting a little bit too wide. All right, definitely an in building here. All right, five thousand in the bank, five thousand per turn. Sounds pretty good. Let's continue. Yeah, we have another duchy on the field, which is, I mean, I, we're not duchy yet, but he's a duke, so. Yanshu with his um, extra mechanic from his um, resource giving him extra prestige. We will continue as a prime minister. And when are we going to get the ability to use our... Ooh. Did he pick up a port? Yes, he did. We will trade with him. Here, take one food. And we'll give you a little bit of cash. Actually, let's remember their mount. And I want to look at the faction council first. In case there's one that can push a trade through. Make sure to hate Dong Zhuo and maybe join us. That depends on if I'm going to get a spy or not. Move Hua Xiong's heir into our faction. We got to look at his family tree. See, we can force one through without getting a deal. That's something, but we like this one. I love this one. This one's really good. And reset on Yamai Hu. His is fine. Shuo Fang rebuild. That's good. Supply depletion. Pirates. Bohai pirates. Targeting Kongrong in the north. See, so far pirates haven't really worked down south at least, but I do want to experiment. I don't care about this. Xu Chang, we're not even going to grab. Oh, I don't want to close it and then... See, if we close it, it's going to reset. Some of these are going to change. I kind of like what we have. Let's just try to steal him. We'll see if Korn loses northern holdings after that deal go through. I think this is the one we're gonna grab, just so that we have one spy. Just to look at turncoats, if nothing else. Okay, so Shizia is still plenty happy with his faction. And if we look at family trees, who do we miss out on for Hua Xiong's faction? His wife. Okay, don't care. Let's take a look at Dong Zhuo's faction. Lots of kids. Okay. And Liu Chong's faction, just because there is a turncoat available, so I want to see who it is. Is it related to him? No, it's her. Just the officer. Luo Jun's available for marriage. Um, oh, I mean, we grabbed him already, so he's on our faction. What am I talking about? He was available for marriage. While wow, Liu Bei's been busy with the kids. Zhong Xuan died. No, what happened? Killed in action at age 64, not even of old age. Our dear classmate. Siren's only five. She's faction heir, so she should have some of the good items. Now, is she single? That's the question. I don't think we were able to propose any marriages with Sun Tzu. <sighs> Alright, we're gonna take in Sun Jian's widow and perhaps Sun Jian's sword. There's no Imperial Jade Seal in the 182 star, so that we don't have to think about. But the sword, the sword should be there. Oh, we also disarm Yan Bai Hu because we're worried that he's a spy. Well, we're not worried that he's a spy. We, we, uh, we're we pretty sure he's a spy. How, how, okay, he's minus 100 on that. Okay, this is fine. We'll give him a couple extra points. Doesn't matter. We got ourselves a wife. Ah, Sun Jian's gear is on hand. Perfect. So, let's see. Lu uh, Bu, he'll be perfect with the horse. Does Lu Bu have 80% armor? 
this horse gives 20% armor. He would have 100% base armor, meaning uh, base damage just will not touch him. But unfortunately, I don't know if he's going to leave, so I can't really do this right now. Uh, administrator. You can do more administrative things, I guess. I don't think I'm ever going to send you on the field. We have a lot of items we're not using, I do realize that, but there's good reasons for a lot of those things not being used. Okay, he can't equip dual swords. Bonfo Zone can. Here, you take this. Your armor 60%. We're gonna boost you to 80%. You're our heir. You can't equip swords, so you can't get the bonus points. I'm the leader. I can equip swords, and I will equip the sword for extra authority. And unbreakable. It's my wife's sword. You definitely should take that, and we should definitely get you potentially the dignified raiment. Maybe it'll come from one of our forges, and then you can Enjoy that as well for the set bonus. Okay, uh, I like where things stand right now. Anyone joining us through the regular channels? Well, he does have a silver armor, it seems. We could consider him. Pass. Okay, we'll grab this first. I'm a little concerned for what's going on over there, but not enough that we'll do something about it. Okay, that should be free, and then we can declare war on them soon. Meanwhile, we'll be taking Hula Pass. You lose a lot of movement the turn after you land, so we can't reach. Which also means they're gonna have this- oh, wait, 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 wait. There is an army. I was thinking about putting them on March, just to get there faster, but now I think it's gonna be two turns. I think they're gonna start next turn with slightly less points, because they just landed. That's fine. upgrade that this is the place where it got the boost for the builds so we can build a lot of things okay who else was the turncoat Bien Jong's faction right they survived our war we didn't actually kill them we probably shouldn't be using Nanjing anymore it's not that useful for us. Art of War is also not that useful. Commerce income we're using already. Industry income we're using already. 10% speed for shock cavalry. We only have one retinue full of shock cavalry. There's actually nothing better. I don't think this is anything wrong with that. And for our book discussion today, we're going to talk about um, the book that we talked about last episode, we introduced, you know, Book of Rights, we talked about Confucian, we talked about Confucian education, and then we led to the fact that of the six subjects that most scholars had to learn, the last subject was math. And of all the math books, oh, it's right here, uh, the book, uh, The Writing on Reckoning. Uh, this is called Suan Shu Shu, also called The Counting Book. This is a very new discovery in Chinese history. So previously, um, what uh, historically was believed to be the first math textbook in China was the nine chapters on mathematic arts, which is a item, accessory item in the game. Uh, I don't think we have it in this campaign, but we had it before. Uh, it's, it's a book, it's called Nine Chapters on Mathematical Arts. It was believed to be written during the Han Dynasty Three Kingdoms period. Um, it was unearthed, you know, in bamboo scrolls, kept very well. And uh, 
It's structured like, you know, typical math textbook. You learn geometry, there's proofs, you learn unit conversions, which was a big thing because you, you know, for a lot of merchants, you're selling grain. You wouldn't do very well if you don't know the unit conversions, right? Nowadays, everyone thinks it's pretty obvious, like, you know, going from um, kilograms to grams, everything's like in multiples of 10 or in base 10 multiples. But if you go for a lot of older uh, units, or even if you're looking at the non-metric system, right? If you're using the, the the English system, inches, foot, it's you know one to twelve conversion. It's not so obvious. Like if you're going from liquid uh, pints into quarts into gallons, those conversions are not so intuitive. So you have to learn stuff like that, and that's all part of math. Uh, things like Pythagorean theorem, things like how to find volume. Uh, Pythagorean theorem very useful for farming, right? You're you're trying to find the um, the slant side, you're basically trying to find volume, right? The triangle calculation of squaring each side is basically forming a square on the outside of the triangle covering the area of the field. So like the Egyptian discovered it for use of agriculture. Same thing in China. Um, there's no difference there. Uh, basically, most math comes from necessity. And the nine chapters of mathematical arts was believed to be the oldest math textbook until... Um, 1983, there was a tomb, I think, near the Jin province that was discovered. It was a Western Han Dynasty lord's tomb, and it was very well kept. And that's very rare, because imagine a couple thousands of years have passed, not only does it have to survive natural events like earthquake, flooding, and so forth, there is the habit of tomb raiding uh, throughout Chinese history. Even during Three Kingdoms, um, raiding tombs was a very common practice because there's just so much stuff buried in these tombs uh, because the Chinese believed in ancestral worship, they believed in um, an afterlife essentially, so you modeled your tomb after how you lived your life. Like if you go visit these tombs, they're not just like, you know, a space and you put the coffin in there and that's it. It's like the tomb itself is structured like your house, obviously built underground and covered up in many layers of dirts and other sort of traps. But you have your room and the room that your coffin sits, your coffin essentially sit where your bed usually sits. And you have furniture, you have items you want to use, you have books, in this case bamboo scrolls, you have your treasures, you have your carriages, you would bury your horses with you. Uh, you're basically bringing whatever you use when you're alive with you when you're dead. And for emperors and lords who uh, know that they're going to have a grand funeral or preparing for this afterlife, they start building their tombs when they become emperor. So basically, it's your pastime, tomb building. And it's a grand, like, especially for emperor tombs, it's a grand project because you are hiring workers who are pretty much going to die after the project. Like, most workers probably even know this that they're going to get killed after the project is complete just so that because they built the traps and entrances the emperor is not going to let them live to tell later people how to get into their tomb so tomb raiding became quite an art uh, in china as well throughout the dynasty knowing that there's so much wealth in it especially if you're a later lord like cao cao sun quan were both really big into tomb raiding because it could uh, bolster your wealth and just to get an idea of how much wealth uh, is involved, I think one of the most recent Han uh, dynasty tombs that was on, um, you know, kind of on Earth was um, a princedom uh, tomb from the Western Han dynasty, and that tomb was in Yuzhang. Let me find out where Yuzhang is. Right here, right. It's it's in the Yuzhang Commandery. Uh, this used to be a princedom in the Western Han Dynasty. Obviously, being really far south, it's not a big princedom. And what happened was, there was a very short-lived emperor during the Western Han Dynasty who was named emperor, I believe, within 37 days. His regent abolished him and renamed a different emperor. And then he wasn't killed. He was given back his princedom. He was a prince before that. And they appointed him when the late emperor died without an heir. And he didn't do a great job as emperor, or at least that's what the history book recorded. And he was later abolished and uh, given back his uh, princedom in a different place. He was a princedom of somewhere else. 
and then he was relocated farther south where he was kind of left to be forgotten. But even such a forgotten prince have so much wealth um, that when they unearthed his tomb, which got raided, but the center tomb never got raided thanks to like an earthquake, which displaced his center tomb. Because there were there's basically very skilled tomb raiders who kind of can look at a tomb and if it's like a wooden structure, it's a stone structure, it's a, a, a earth, like earthenwork, like a dirt structure, you can tell what dynasty it is. And you can look at other tombs that have been discovered from that dynasty to know how these tombs usually are built during these dynasties, like how it's structured. So you can pinpoint places to dig to find the main room where the Lord is being buried. Because there's also side burial chambers where you keep like his clothing and stuff like that. There's The tombs are huge. Um, they're massive structures. And when they discover the tomb, they found holes being dug into the tomb. Uh, we're talking about actual archaeologists like discovering the tomb, not the Tomb Raiders. So they knew that Tomb Raiders been there before. So they were thinking that maybe this tomb has been emptied out already, which is pretty common. But when they actually went in and unearthed the whole thing, they discovered that the hole that went in missed the main chamber because the main chamber shifted during an earthquake. So it got really lucky, but a lot of the stuff is pretty damaged. But even from this damaged mess, they discovered so many gold items. Remember the gold hoofs that I talked about during um, Liu Chua's reign, where Taishan discovered gold and there was horses being discovered out west? And they combined the two by using the gold and casting them in the shape of a horse's hoof. And he would reward them to people he liked as a sign of grace from the emperor. Well, this prince in, uh, in particular was actually Liu Chua's son, one of his sons. And he got so many of these golden hoofs that when they unearthed his tomb, um, there was, I think, 83 kilos of gold in his tomb. Uh, one of the largest, uh, you know, findings of gold from tombs. And Wu Zhu, the, the copper coin, these coin are stringed together. The hole inside is to put a string. So it's kind of like a bead, right? And you keep the coin on there and you weigh the bead to pay because, you know, sometimes you're carrying hundreds of beads. He had these uh, threaded a thousand per bracelet, essentially. And he piled it. I think there was 50 million bronze coin in his tomb and they were all rusted together it's like a mountain of these coins like the wealth for these tombs are unimaginable like just from stuff like copper from raw material of gold and on beyond that you have like you know historical artifacts you know maybe works of art that you can recover from these tombs which is why tomb raiding is you know such a big deal throughout the dynasties um but essentially incredible amount of wealth uh, in these tombs and the reason why we're talking about tomb raiding and tomb uh, discovery is because in 1983 uh, in the Jin province they discovered a tomb of a western Han dynasty lord and in the tomb was 200 slits of bamboo uh, that made up the writings on reckoning uh, it had a title called Suan Shu Shu and 185 of these strips are perfectly readable. Everything's preserved. About 10 of them are slightly damaged, but you can still make out of it. I mean, it's a math book, so you know you can deduce a lot of the things. And they discover what is probably the oldest math textbook in Chinese history. Uh, probably written during the Qin Dynasty, or pre-Qin Dynasty actually. Probably during the Warring State period. Very, very similar content to the ninth chapter's mathematical art. I mean, if you discover math textbook from different periods, they're going to have very similar content. Uh, but the idea here is it's one of the oldest book. It's actually quite interesting the game would actually include it because uh, this is a fairly recent discovery, right? 1983, this book is discovered. Uh, before this, before 1983, the recognized oldest math textbook uh, throughout Chinese history has been the nine chapters of mathematical arts. Uh, but anyways, that's one of the lessons you have to learn to become an educated scholar and the idea here is like if you're a merchant someone asked me this like if you're a merchant and you didn't read the book what would be wrong well you know assuming you are taught basic math right by maybe your parents you're okay and then someone's going to tell you you know how to conversions work but you probably wanted to know that yourself nothing's gonna you know happen to you you know what what are do we have like uneducated merchants today in society of course we do we have people who who failed out of school 
right? But if you are part of the elites, you're part of the scholar class, gentry class, and your parents have money to put you to school, your parents have money to hire a teacher to come teach you, you know, you're going to learn these stuff systematically. And if you learn it, doesn't mean you'll use it, doesn't mean you will remember it. You know, plenty of people go to school and forget all the math they were ever taught. Uh, but essentially, you know, it's a comprehensive math textbook of this time period it teaches you uh, what people already discovered up to this point. So stuff like quadratic formulas, not the actual formula, but how to solve, you know, solve essentially solve for x in a lot of these equations. Those were discovered, as I said, Pythagorean theorem, a lot of volume metric uh, geometry. Um, you know, you have to have some sort of practical use for a lot of these things uh, for them to be discovered. Unit conversion is a big chapter, how to convert different units of grain, um, you know, how they convert using the units of that time period, and so forth. So that's the book today, and we're happy with the books in our library for now until we get a better one. I think the one that we're really looking forward to, this I kind of want, we're about to get Silk. Um, corruption obviously would be really good, but I'm going to wait till we get our hands on Loyal to fully upgrade a city. Satisfaction, probably not as important, although a reason why we should probably start hiring some of those generals we captured. This is going to be tricky. Oh, I have a way. We capture in Chuan, give it away to a vassal. And then we fight this and then we defend here in case any future enemies come and we can fight alongside allies. Yeah, I like that plan. Or even better, we give this to a vassal, we give the pass to them, and then we park our army next to the pass. So anyone want to come over, they have to fight the pass and the garrison will show up and we'll be fighting with allies. Right, there's, 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 there's ways around this, we can do it. Ah, they were supposed to go help with them against this war with um the problem is like we can only land here right we can't get past that shallow so they have to like come down and then we can join them when they're assaulting Chang'an or something right now we can't do much okay i think everything's pretty much set up okay here we can probably build corruption reduction not in a rush to upgrade those passes. I think we're pretty good. Um, there's no turncoats we check. Anything else we can do in diplomacy before we end? Sima Long, the Leon Rebels. I like would like to get the horse pasture here, but at the same time, I think I want to focus down everyone here first before we do anything. Wait, I thought I pushed this deal through. Did we not? Did we not finance the trade? Or is it going to activate next turn? Huh. That is a little weird. Oh, he had a weapon too. Okay, I'm going to grab him. Because eventually we'll need one of those random characters to make a vassal. So like we can get some items at the same time. Oh, he's not very content. Greedy, oh, greedy plus stubborn. Stubborn's good. Greedy is not so good. All right, you're just going to leave then. I have no time for you. I'm not going to have you mess up our character experience. All right, I think we're we're good. Everything is where it should be and uh, we'll continue. Alrighty. They moved over here. We have patience. Okay, you're gonna lead. We can actually reach there. I'm very happy about that. Now we cut them off. So I guess I'll turn them towards the south. Ribu will stay on top of our chance to capture Yujin over there. 
pacifist. How do you get pacifists from con conquering a, a city? I mean, it's great for administrators, like 5% extra income for everything, but weird that you will grab that after Wait, conquering like somewhere. So. so I'm gonna grab this. Income first during this season. The horse pasture discount, we don't actually really need that right now. Ooh, level seven. Keep leveling up. All right, one extra army limit for us, faction-wide. I think that's probably the most important thing right now. Let's attack. Huh. I think we have to fight this. I don't want to take casualties. We're about to take the capital, which is actually a very high level, plus um, military infrastructure on top. So we'll fight this one. Alrighty, I think this is the first time we fought a Hula Gate since they moved it. The other side would have been easier, but that makes sense because, you know, usually you're attacking from this side, so this side stronger setup. That would make total sense. But I think what we will do is actually leave one on each side since I have to destroy, you know, pretty much all these structures. Wait, 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 this tower doesn't- oh, actually no, it fires this way. I was like, does it not fire to the front? That would be hilarious. Okay. Yeah, we'll split our forces in half and everyone else will chill behind here until we decide which way we want to attack things. Take that out. Take that out. Okay, we both missed the competition. Left side or right side? Well, technically the right side got the command first, but the left side hit the target first. Good job. Wait, we're getting shot at? <gasps> they have a siege weapon. How did I miss that? Well, try to hit this before you get knocked out. There we go. I guess we're attacking from this side. Diversification is good. How is it not burning? All right, this got to hit eight shots. All right, they got one shot on it. And they keep missing, good. Nice. Might as well try to take this one out. We only have two left. We did it. All right, blow a hole here. I mean, if we can just stay alive to let them waste all their shots, that's a win for us, too. This way. 
They only have one more shot. And we only have two more shots. Okay. Can we pop this. Out of ammo and without hope. I don't think we can break this unless we hit like perfectly. Like from the four rocks, almost all of them have to hit. Actually, no, even if all four hit, it would be 10% short. Anyways, they did great. Hang out in the back. You guys deserve a break. We're up. I control this range carefully. We have range advantage, but we can't walk too close or else that's going to go away. Smoke screening it. It's also their captain. Alright, while they're firing, I'm gonna go in and do some hail barrels as well. We don't have firebomb yet. That would be nice if we do get that eventually. I think we take the bridge. Oh, the throw traps? Yes, please throw traps. And force them to walk on the bridge towards us, and then we'll do the shot from the bridge down. Wait. Oh, these are shooting at us. Okay. It's like, what is shooting at us? You're gonna be braced. I'm not gonna charge them. We'll just walk around them. Get out of my way. I got the extra 20% armor from the horse. I can get to 98% evasion, 80% armor. All this one's pretty stacked. Oh, yes, throw the traps on the ground. Please do. No one's gonna come. Everyone's just ignoring me. Alright, I guess we'll we'll help arrow this then. Wait, is that they burn already? Yeah, they burned already. If we can somehow get the juggernauts right here, imagine the damage we can do. This isn't half bad. Yeah, those towers have long range. Alright, we'll make sure they don't come back. Go! 
Don't move, don't move. No, it's not gonna happen. And it went down it did went on cooldown but it didn't actually take one of our usage away, so that's fine. Here they come, here they come. Too bad I don't have any sort of Flame of Phoenix ability on me. Or Firebomb, like I said. That would help a lot. Use the last bit of ammo to kill this. Alright, let's try this again. No! You had it! You even pulled the bow out. I will stand on the bridge. Come on. It's one guy here. Charge. Alright, we'll just take this shot. It's not going to be the best shot. I want to do the horizontally cross, but I don't think it's possible. No. Okay. It's, this is not even possible. What's he doing? Ah, fight. I'll take the cooldown. So apparently when I used the other ability, it pushed this one on cooldown even though I didn't use it. Juggernauts are here. I don't know how they will fit in through this this little gap, but uh, they're here. And they get into combat. I mean, with 80% armor and with them, uh, they're half-half, so they, they'll do a decent amount of damage. How will we fit through this gap? Alright, we'll shoot at whoever wants to cross the bridge. Form a Q! Form a Q! I should have done this a little bit earlier, but this is fine. Right? Yes! That's what we were hoping for. Even though we only got two shots out, it's okay. It's over. Hey, the first machine finally made it. Alright, one step away from reclaiming Loya. That's gonna be a tough fight, too. Just like a slow fight. I'm gonna try to upgrade Hula Pass actually. 
You maybe get a little discount going on for it. Sure. I mean, it's pretty wasteful because it's like one building slot. Right now we have like so many builds going on in Shulafan that we probably should do it here. Mm, double check a few things first. Shixie, finally. So that 30 point kicked in the following turn. There we go. So our spy reform was worth it. Yujin's at... He's the administrator of Luoyang, but he's on the field, so he can't go there and defend. Oh, Liu Bian. Liu Xie's older brother. Also, you know, Emperor that Dong Zhuo will poison, or poisoned. Empress He don't care. This way, we can pretty much guarantee that we can grab Yu Jin once he comes back to us. He's going to be at 17, so I'm going to try to recall him soon, two turns, and then we'll try to grab him as a turncoat if he's not wiped already. Don't draw us on the bench. He should summon himself soon, I'm guessing. All right. Yeah, we're going to upgrade this. And that's going to do it for us, I think. I don't think we're going to do much. Let's see if that trade formed. This trade didn't get pushed through. Despite the game telling us that we did get this. But it did get cheaper to the point where I can just do this. That's a win, I guess. Sima Liang's piece. You be all ma. No. I mean the thing is like he has these two pieces of land. I'm not in a rush at all to throw an army over there. But I might as well get something from him for now. Oh wait. There was an extra shift to power value that we didn't get. Ah, click too fast. Um, we don't have a deal with Hansu anymore, so we're going to go wipe him out soon. Military alliance with Sun Tzu. It looks like Cao Cao might wipe him out for us. But you see a war with them? No, but hopefully they can. Anyways, let's continue. Uh, we have a situation. Koro showed up out of fog and uh, is sieging Anping. Okay, that's not happening. So, no, that's not what we want. We're going to be shifting this army over. Gonna take a few turns, we're gonna lose some land, but that's not a problem. We'll summon them. Maybe in Henei, actually. Just to be safe, build up a force, and then go after them. Oh, they downgraded this. It was level 7, now it's only level 4. But they still kept the military infrastructure, but still, it should be easier. Crushing defeat for us. Um, they get three siege weapons on the wall. They get a whole new retinue as well. We'll beat them down, no problem. Ah, rainy day. Doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna hide our army to make sure they deploy their siege weapons in the wrong spot. Make sure everyone is kind of hidden here. Except for Huang Gai, who's going to show up right here. And he's going to run. 
No, regular shots. You can't move those, but we can move ours. They're gonna try to hit him. Good luck with that. All right, I'm gonna move our siege weapons up. See, the AI kind of knows and don't know as well. They put all the barricades in the right place, clearly cheating, uh, but they've respected the fact that we have one visible unit and put all the siege weapons towards where they are. In position. And because they downgraded it, the towers are going to be weaker. Right? If they had a level 10, a level 7 city, it would have been the higher tier towers. So we hit the barricade, we hit the gate, but we missed the tower. So some low, some high, but just not right. Alright, one more volley should do it. This one, please. Yeah, I might go for that one actually. And just open this up. Or else we have to shift. Actually, no, let's shift. It's easier if we shift. Units get ready. Time to show them so that they can move their units out. Yeah, I think we'll pop this and then open up this wall or this wall, both are okay, and then move some of our units up. I don't know how much ammo we have left. Seven, eight. It's probably gonna cost us like five, so maybe we can open one hole, but the gates are open, so that's also good. They barricaded both of these up, but the interior towers... We can break these. That's a miss. <laughs> we got one hit on it. We need four. We got two. We got the wall behind it. We got three hits. Come on, one more volley. Five volleys. Yep, five volleys indeed. Um, that leaves us enough to pop open the hole. Let's just pop open this one right next to the gate. That way we can use the gate as well as sort of an entrance when we put our troops down, 70%. Got one volley left. Um, can we try this? Yeah, that's it. You guys are done. You guys are good. We'll call you guys one now. Go absorb the enemy. Yeah, go absorb all the arrows because... We don't have a lot of range to counter that, so we're going to just tank it. We're going to save our range to maybe wipe out their um, spear units or something like that. They might kill like 20 per group, we'll still be okay. I doubt they have that much firepower, though. Let's start moving these guys up. It'll take a ton some time. All right, they're halfway there. We're still relatively healthy.
he might shoot like there because the huge aim for like the leftmost spot so maybe we want to go in here yeah throw the traps do it fire it please there we go look at that that's what you want to do get out the traps on the ground that's good enough Enemy range units are almost depleted. We barely lost 10 units per group. This one lost 10, 1, 6, 9. Acceptable losses at this point. I wish I had a bigger gap though. It's gonna hard to use these guys with this small of a gap. One more volley from him. Break formation. Move to the side. Alright, round two. Lots of cavalry here. know about this plan not exactly what I wanted to happen uh, just why not down the center You should be firing, shouldn't you? Hmm. It has to do with height, I think. Like this rock is kind of. What if we drag a couple of them out? Oh, oh, they're thinking they, they like the wall hits. Hmm. It's dense enough. It's worth a shot. Doesn't matter what unit we're killing. Hey, they're coming out! Barbecue them! Hmm, guess it's really hard to use. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, this works. Let me see if I can attract anyone else out. Oh, they're throwing the traps on him. Hello, I'm right here. Right here. I think it's just over. They don't want to fight me. They have some units here. Oh, that's what I want to see. Except for not when I'm here, but... Alright, new setup for that group right there. 
hallway's a little bit gap. Like, I can't stack them too wide, right? If they're too wide, like, too depth, then they'll just fire flames on each of each other, and that doesn't work. It has to be like this, and then they have to go like this to try to catch those guys out. Alright, to open up a path for them to do that. We're gonna have to do some heavy lifting. Let me just charge them. What if I just tell them to shoot fire at them? What would happen? Would like the first guy who gets the open shot do it? Oh, they got chased out. Okay, that's good, that's good. We'll engage them. We'll clear out a path for them to set up. And we'll just tell them not to fire yet. It's only that group right there. Why are they holding on so well? Saber infantry? Like his pathing, he's gonna go outside over there. to manual fire right here. Can we do that? Can we lift the shot up? Okay, we can do this, but we can't lift it up the stairs. Does this burn this? No, it doesn't. Hmm. Alright, so we can't... Oh, yes, we can. That works. We just burn some of our troops. Oops. Find an angle. Wait till this burns down. Just confused because they can't fire up. This works too. <laughs> I 
Almost had us. It's over. The capital is ours again. We'll move the Emperor back and uh, rebuild the Han. Alrighty. So let's occupy it. And we'll move the capital at the start of the next episode. We'll use this as a save point and uh, we'll end things here. See you guys next time. Bye.